There is a new 48 Hours this week, and it looks into the story of a father-daughter bond so strong that when Gary Bardwell could not reach his daughter, Jesse, he knew something was wrong. And he believed that Jesse's boyfriend, Jason, had something to do with it. Tomorrow night, 48 Hours correspondent Maureen Maher looks at how Jesse's father would stop at nothing to find out what happened. Here's a preview. I remember having a nightmare that something was terribly wrong. Jesse was, was killed. And when I woke up, it was just a dream. But in his heart of hearts, Gary Bardwell knew it was more than a dream. It was an omen. And I felt it. In May 2016, Jessie vanished from her home in Richardson, Texas, where she'd been living with her boyfriend of four months, Jason Lowe. Detective Kieran Hale was assigned to the case. As the father of three girls, I was very determined to get to the bottom of what had happened to Jessie Bardwell. Jason Lowe told him Jesse had left their apartment on the morning of May 8th and never returned. Jason still seemed unconcerned four days later. The detective recorded their conversation. We just did our own thing always. I didn't question, didn't question me and it worked. Mm. The day detectives searched the apartment, there was a line of cocaine on the table. But it wasn't the drugs they were interested in. It was an odor coming from the garage. It's a smell that you never forget. It was the smell of death, and it was coming from the back of Jason Lowe's black Audi. There was no Jesse Bardwell, but even without a body, Jason was charged with murder. Can you tell me where she's at? I don't know any of that, man. I had no doubt that he had killed her. But he did doubt they would ever find her. Texas is a huge state. There are 100 million different places you could hide a body in Texas. The police eventually found Jesse Bardwell. What they found, no father should ever see. And she was thrown away like a piece of trash. <laughs> a lot of times you can't recognize evil. You just, it's one of those things that you know it when you see it. I don't feel he's guilty of murder. Jason's court appointed attorney, Andy Farkas, says he is sure that Jason did not murder Jesse. He's not so sure he can convince a jury. So he road tests his case. I've, I've been a lawyer for 42 years. In a mock trial. I have never done this. With surprising results. Not guilty of murder. Not guilty. The defense now believes Jason Lowe could walk out of jail a free man. But Gary Bardwell will not let that happen. Give me 10 minutes in a 5 by 8 room and I would kill him. 48 mm. Hours correspondent Maureen Maher joins us now on the set. This sounds like it was an excruciating journey for the father. I think, you know, he had to wait a year and a half almost before they went to trial, but it was the four months from the time that she inexplicably moves to Dallas. This is a family who'd been ravaged by drug addiction and loss. So these two were particularly close. They texted good morning, they texted good night, and then all of a sudden, nothing, no communication. And the only way he could get a hold of her was to go through Jason, the, the new boyfriend. You know, and I think we all have that friend or family member who starts a relationship with somebody and you think, what is with this? Right. And you kind of don't hear from them and you worry about it. I think the father's concern was, she's 27. When do I step in? Mm -hmm. And when do I let her make her own decisions? Mm -hmm. She is an adult. I can't force her not to be in this relationship. What was it about Jason that rubbed him the wrong way? Well, he was a pathological liar. For mm. many years, he'd been telling people he was a Navy SEAL and had been honorably discharged with PTSD. I mean, how diabolical yeah. to create uh, a scenario where you can get away with bad behavior and do it with honor. And he'd never been in the military. His mother was. It's almost like he stole the honor that she had gained mm. and the respect and he saw it and he wanted it, but he just created this idea that I am a veteran, but I'm a little wacky because I have PTSD, so you should excuse some of my crazy stalkerish behavior. So I think watching the preview, I was very shocked to see the jury say, not guilty. Yeah, so I mean, what what happened there? I think, you know, you're looking at a mock trial and um, the defense attorney, Andy Farkas, is the one who gets up on the stand in the role of Jason Lowe. Right. He can strike the exact tone he wants, use the exact words he wants, present it in exactly the same environment he wants. It's entirely different when a pathological liar gets up on the stand, who's very emotional, who doesn't always follow script. He could even use the same words, but it's a totally different delivery when an emotional defendant is on the stand versus a measured 
experienced defense attorney. So how often does that something like that happen where there's a mock trial to sort of... He said he'd never done it before, mm. but I think um, it's not so much that defense attorneys do it or a prosecutor does it, but jury consultants do it frequently and they'll do it as part of their services. Interesting. So, I mean, where does it go from here? Where does the case go from here? So uh, the case, he, he has been through the court system and uh, you'll see what happens in the courts, but I, I don't ever think that it's the end when you yeah. have someone like this because they can't stop talking. And he still is continuing Every time. to deny. I mean, how many, you've been doing this for 20 years. It's, mm -hmm. it, that is sort of standard. They, they can't, can't stop, stop talking. talking. And even if they're in prison, they can't stop talking. Mm. They just want to keep the conversation going. They don't really care what it's about. So, you know, I don't think you've heard the last of him. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, and I don't think you've heard the last from the father either, because he's not going to stop talking either. Well, we heard his last words in your piece. Yes. And he sounds like he still wants his sort of pound of flesh, if you will. Right? Uh, yes. He tells a story about taking a picture of Jason Lowe out on a stump and hitting it with a, a sledgehammer. And you'll see the piece of paper, what it looks like. It's There's anger and rage for a reason. He yeah. lost total control and had no say in it yeah. whatsoever. I think a lot of people can understand that totally sure. mm -hmm. Maureen Maher thank you so much thank you and you can watch the full story tomorrow at 10 9 central it's part of a 48 hours double feature which kicks off at 9 8 central tomorrow night on CBS